I was on Reddit the other day and I saw this. I wish I had known for sure that I wanted to be an engineer. I crashed my car this week on the way to work and my first thought when I realized I was alive was, thank God this is a great excuse not to go in today. But I'm still working there, still trying to figure that out though. That has 177 upvotes and a bunch of comments agreeing with it. Seeing something like this can be very discouraging for younger engineers, so let's talk about everything you need to know before starting engineering so you don't end up depressed like this. First, it's important to address that once you graduate, not every engineering job is going to be the same. Some jobs can actually be soul sucking and depressing because all you're doing is excel work, moving data from one row to another. Other jobs may be less depressing but pretty boring where you're just reviewing AutoCAD stuff all day. These jobs can also have you working in dull offices like this in a cubicle with very little human interaction and a boss that looks like that. But we have engineering jobs on the other end of the spectrum where you work in open offices with lots of sunshine, aesthetic desks, work from home flexibility and a bunch of friendly faces. At those companies you'll find yourself using your creativity to solve problems. For example, redesigning the body or outer shell of a drone so it's more aerodynamic and when you have millions of people using that drone that you helped design or build, it feels pretty amazing. So we notice a pattern here. One end of the job spectrum is mind numbing and your work has absolutely no impact. On the other end, the jobs are more creative and your work has a genuine impact on people's lives. Companies like Apple, Tesla, Google, Facebook, Ecobee or other tech startups usually fall under that category. I'm not gonna name names for companies that fall under the other category. That being said, like any profession, there are glamorous jobs and shitty jobs. So it's up to you to try to seek out those glamorous jobs so you feel like your engineering degree was worth it and that you enjoy your life. I've made a bunch of videos in the past on how to do that. Also, if you find yourself at a job that you don't like, just leave. This isn't the 1950s anymore where you work for one company for over 40 years. Most engineers, especially in tech, usually switch companies every like two or three years. Now people always assume that because I create content about engineering that it is truly my passion and I've never had any doubts about choosing this major. But that's not true. In my first year I was really stressed out but I was happy with the major that I chose. Then in my second and third year I started to really have doubts on why I'm even in mechanical engineering to begin with. I started feeling very empty, I was super stressed out and I started to doubt whether this engineering major is worth it because I felt like after graduating I'll be forced into a boring dead end job that I won't enjoy. So I'm only sharing this just to show you that it is completely normal to have doubts about your major especially with how stressful engineering can be. However, two things helped me get over these doubts. First, when I discovered the glamorous side of engineering, it helped me realize that all the stress that I'm going through in university will actually be worth it at the end. Second, when I had hobbies that I could do outside of engineering, like hitting the gym, training jujitsu or doing gymnastics, it helped me just appreciate engineering a lot more. Engineering on its own won't make you rich. As an engineer, you'll have a comfortable middle class salary and lifestyle. As long as you have a job, you won't go hungry, you can afford a house, go on vacations, enjoy some luxuries or some hobbies, and be able to save a little bit for retirement. Depending on where you're working and what type of engineering you studied, when you graduate, you can be making anywhere between 60K to 150K per year. So you'll be in a much better financial situation than a lot of people, but you won't be rich or wealthy by any means. However, if you take your critical thinking skills that you learned during your time studying engineering and apply them to business, finance, or pan law, then you can find yourself building some decent wealth for yourself or at least be part of the upper middle class. Also, if you work for big tech companies before they become huge, then you have a good chance of building some decent wealth for yourself. For example, if you started working at Tesla 10 years ago, you'd be pretty wealthy now just because of how much their stock has grown since. Or if you get into venture capital, invest in some early stage startups, or even start your own startup, if they succeed, then you're well on your way to becoming pretty wealthy. So this kind of just goes to show that there's so much you can do with an engineering degree. You don't just have to follow the traditional route. And so you can't really put a number on how much an engineer can make once they graduate. There's a big difference between what people in university think engineering is versus what it actually is. For example, if you want a job that involves designing and building stuff like cars, airplanes, rockets, robots, etc., you'd probably want to get a job as a design engineer. However, keep in mind that about 60% of design work doesn't actually involve any designing. If you need to design a bracket, designing that bracket in CAD or running FEA simulations on it is only a small aspect of the work needed to get that bracket made and used. A lot of the work includes documentation, creating drawings, figuring out where and how to place the bracket in the big assembly you're working on, pulling new part numbers, making sure your bracket design doesn't negatively affect someone else's work, 
reloading everything after your CAD program inevitably crashes, filling out engineering change orders, updating bombs, etc. This type of work is called paper pushing and there's nothing wrong with doing that type of work because it's necessary to get the part you're working on actually built, but it's just something that a lot of people don't talk about so I'm just mentioning it here. Now this may shock you, but if you work for a big company like let's say Boeing for example, you don't get to design a jet engine. Instead, you get to design a very small, small, tiny sub-assembly that maybe just holds the fuel lines. However, if you work for startups, you'll find yourself doing a lot more design work and less paper pushing work because startups usually just move very, very fast and skip the paper pushing aspect of the work. Obviously, that has its benefits and drawbacks, but personally, I like it, which is why I chose to work for a startup. But the more complicated the product your company designs and the more safety requirements it has, like a jet engine, the more paper pushing work you're gonna have to do. Now, from experience, there are three types of engineering students, and I think it's important for you to be self-aware on which one you are. The first is a student that went into engineering because they think engineering is where they'll make a lot of money. They were probably influenced by their parents to pursue engineering. If they make it to graduation, they're probably the first ones to leave engineering and work in a completely different industry. They don't have a real interest in what they're learning, but they're reasonably good at math and science so they're just able to make it to graduation. I'd say this was like 30% of my engineering class. The second are the ones that were really good at math and science in high school. They probably really love physics, so engineering just seemed like a natural choice. These people tend to be pretty random. Some either grow into really, really liking engineering and embracing it, while others just leave it completely. I'd say this type of engineering student is me, and from my experience, it made up about 60% of my engineering class. The third type is the actual engineers. These people really, really love engineering because they knew they always wanted to create and design things and build things from a very early age. They weren't afraid to tinker with stuff, had a huge passion for tech, and were really interested in the course content and how that related to the real world. And I'd say this made up about 10% of my engineering class. Now, <laughs> I may be a little biased, but I still think that engineering is still one of the best degrees to major in regardless, because it teaches you to problem solve, be able to understand very complex concepts, and work your ass off to meet a deadline. Those three things combined can allow you to be really successful in whatever it is you choose to do after you graduate. Now, this is the last time in your life that you're going to be surrounded by people your own age. So use this time to make as many genuine friends as possible. Talk to the people sitting next to you in class, join clubs, go to events and parties. You will have a lot of work and assignments thrown at you, that's for sure, but you still need to make time to be social like at least once a month. Because you honestly never know who you're going to meet and the more social you become and the more people you allow yourself to meet, the more you make room for like serendipitous opportunities to happen. For example, you can meet someone that can become a co-founder at a startup that you guys both work on together or you can meet someone that helps you get a job later down the road. I mean, the benefits are endless. Now, if you're seeing something for the first time in a lecture, you will be very, very confused in class. That's because the professors aren't hired because they're good teachers, they're hired because they're good researchers. So it's weird, but you really can't expect a professor to be good at teaching. That being said, for you not to be confused in class, you need to read the material that's taught in the lecture either the morning of or the night before. Spend some time looking through the course syllabus, figuring out what's going to be taught in the upcoming lecture, and then read about it either from the textbook that the course has or from the professor's notes. Then when you go to class, you won't be as confused. However, if you don't have enough time to do that, that's totally fine. It's not the end of the world. Just don't be surprised when you're a little bit confused in class because that is totally normal and I was confused in almost every single class I attended, especially in my second and third year of engineering. Just make sure to review what was taught in class after class, do a ton of practice questions and take some additional notes if you need to. For stuff that you can't figure out on your own, talk to the TAs, the professor or some of your classmates for help. Sadly, most of what you learn in your classes is not practical at all and is very theoretical. Unless you get a research-based job after you graduate, you realize most of what you learn in school isn't really gonna help you with your first ever full-time job. You will end up learning a lot on the job for sure, but the best way to be truly prepared is to do internships. I've talked about internships a lot in the past in my previous videos, but I have to mention it again here. Every term you have when you're not taking courses for school, that term should be spent doing internships. You can find these internships internships either on LinkedIn or you can reach out to engineering student design teams at your school and see if they're hiring interns. Or another thing you can do is reach out to really small startups that would need engineering help. You can Google hardware startups in the area, reach out to them and see if they're willing to hire you as an intern. Usually if they're a really small startup, they won't have as much money to be spending on an experienced intern, so they'll be more likely to take a chance with a non-experienced intern if it's your first ever internship experience. A basic step-by-step -step guide that you can follow to get your first internship looks something like this. First, find a job posting that you want. Second, look at the skills that they require for you to have. 
Third, go online and look up online tutorials on that skill. Fourth, once you learn that skill, work on a project that requires you to use that new skill or software that you learned. Fifth, put those projects on your resume and watch the job interviews start rolling in. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I share the eight traps that engineering students fall into, or check out that video where I share with you how I studied for my engineering university exams. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!